In the time before the Titans, before the gods of Olympus, a great battle was waged. The wrath of the primordials. Well, if you wanted to get our attention after three, I guess that's one way to do it. You gotta up the stakes somehow after Kratos destroyed an entire pantheon. Brought over from God of War 3. The art direction on these cutscenes are phenomenal. This madness of war. Santa Monica did their homework, but in classic God of War fashion, put their own spin on things. It's believed it was either the blood of Kronos castrating Uranus and throwing his member into the sea, or from a more primordial level that created the Furies. Santa Monica combined both to make theirs. And from this rage, this madness of war, the Furies were brought forth. It seems everything in this world is created through rage and war. The Furies with the Primordials, Kratos with Ares, or even Kronos and Zeus. The Aegean the Hecatonchores became an example to war. A special symbol for those who might think to break a blood oath with a god. 10 out of 10 title card placement. We're shown our boy Kratos soon to be title, as Gaia mentions breaking the oath. Ascension is definitely a black sheep in the God of War series, but was still treated with the same respect and passion as all the other titles. Never, never again. I'm imagining Kratos is referring to never serving the gods or anyone again as he's in prison. Hello, Kratos. Ooh, creepy, creepy. Don't like her hiding from our sight with her insect-like sounds. What's wrong? You seem confused, Kratos. Having trouble remembering our special time together? Could be referring to his torture. But more Santa Monica poking fun at us for being confused and not having all the details. Where are we? How of all people did Kratos get captured? Where's her arm? <laughs> Not to Kratos. Always our man to stand up after every hit. Literally, the definition of. I didn't hear no bell. Your rage means the PS3 was something else for its time. The facial animations on Kratos alone are top notch. Also, sister, let me tell you that his rage is gonna mean everything here in about a decade. Maybe just because I just played the first two God of War games, but having Kratos keep his blades out while running and then sheathing them did so much for my immersion. It's also so satisfying every time I watch him do it. Eee, the body horror is really on another level with this opening level. And I expect nothing less from Greek Myth. I guess now's a good time to talk about the rage meter. I'm not in love with it, but I do understand it. Kratos isn't at his most angry with Ares and the gods as a whole, so when fighting, he's gotta build that rage up. This game is the softest we've ever seen Kratos, and even specifically mentions not wanting to kill any more innocents. For gameplay, it's sometimes fun to manage the meter and weigh the pros and cons of expending it. The best part of it, though, is really feeling powerful once you got it. Once you get it, it's much harder to lose it. Also made his OG combos all the way from one feel fresh, new, and special again. The gods forsake me! We are all innocent. Shut your home! He is infected! We are all infected! He's infected, all right. Just not in the way you might think. Well, hot damn, does God of War games have a stiffy for starting their games where they'll end? Ugh. Remember when I mentioned body horror? Oh, I hate it. A little not so fun fact for you there's a condition just like this called scabies that humans can contract. So, you're welcome. Ah, there it is. I was wondering when we get our game opening boss fight. Really digging all the small improvements over God of War that Ascension brings. The new UI elements are one less obstacle to really lose myself in the game. This note is about Orcos, but has a suspicious liking to Kratos. This new climbing is smooth as ever. No more awkward fights on the walls anymore, as charming as those may have been. For anyone watching these videos in series order, sorry. The fixed camera once again gets to have a lot of fun with the cinematography, and I'm saddened we haven't seen many games with it since. Why doesn't Mr. Talgaris just cross the little box right away? Because we need a cool fight arena, and it's damn cool! Ascension does just feel like a big refinement of the already perfect God of War 3, and I will be winning all these little things throughout, like not taking 13 dog years to pull a lever anymore. Or how Kratos will now reach up with his blades when targeting flyers or tall enemies. Wow, that detail in the chest cavity. Jesus, that sounds like something Jeffrey Dahmer would say. Is exquisite. I hardly believe this game is almost 10 years old. It's a decent impression, right? New chests. Can't go back to opening with one hand like in three, because that made Kratos seem weak in one, two, and chains, and ghost. Anyways, Kratos smash! Huh, 
This is the base guy we play as in the Ascension multiplayer. Neat that he's canon in the universe? Speaking of that, the multiplayer for this game came out seemingly when every game was having a multiplayer shoved into it. But this one was actually pretty good. It wasn't without its issues and its cheese, but I remember having some great laughs and some really cool fights there and never really seen anything like it before. Did God of War need it? No, of course not. But I think Ascension was all the better for having it. You also got to pick which god you'd serve and get upgrades and levels and cosmetics through that, so it, it, was, just, it was just really cool, okay? Notice Kratos reaches out his hand. See, he wasn't always a bad guy, guys. Always have loved the visual upgrades to the blades in every single God of War game. F just purely stat upgrades. I want to see myself getting stronger. Moments like these aren't used as much as they were in God of War 2, so the novelty never wore off. So, I was really biting my nails trying to get away from this thing. <laughs> Sex minigame fake out. Is God of War growing up? This is the first one to not have one. Let's add this to the running total of don't put your Kratos in that. Even after the enormity of God of War 3, Ascension still finds a way to wow us with its sense of scale. Imagine having to eat yourself just to stop dying. By the way, if you're in a life and death situation, do not cut off a limb to eat it for food because by doing that, your body will be working overtime to, you know, like, heal the wound and all the trauma you go through. It just won't work. Don't do it. And that's my PSA for you today. Her legs twitch and curl just like an insect would. Is this a callback to the first game? What's up with three weeks in particular? It's really weird not seeing the blades on his hands or back. It really emphasizes the chains and the weight they must be on him, literally and metaphorically. This was the first time TC Carson got to motion capture Kratos himself. God of War 3 had stand-in actors for their mocap. Use these items to still your mind, Kratos. Do not let illusion deceive you. And that's why every time he sees the ring, he's reminded that the illusions aren't real. Freedom. Yes, freedom. Troy Baker always the go. Notice how the yes sort of cuts off the end of Carson's line. People don't talk as I speak, then you speak. And little things like this really help sell the dialogue. You can really see TC Carson's motion capture coming through too. These little movements that are completely motivated by an actor who knows this character inside and out really elevates these scenes so much. It also just fills me with joy that for almost 10 years, Carson has only been able to play one half of Kratos. And now he gets to fully be Kratos. And I say there's a marked difference for the best in this Kratos that only Carson could deliver. Even when he walks, he just exudes testosterone. There is only one main weapon in Ascension, but we are given a host of sidearms that we can pick throughout, each with their own purposes that are quick and unobtrusive to use. I remember hearing complaints back when this game came out, but I really preferred this to any other title in the series. Most of the time, we just upgrade and use the Blades of Chaos anyway, so why develop other weapons when they could just put all their focus into making this one the best it could be? These mini games were always so fun to do. The dodging is piss easy to super satisfying. Gosh, the animation work on this poor Loxodon is breathtaking, but also really heartbreaking. <laughs> the way his hand grovels, and you can literally see the life leave its eyes. Bravo, Vince. I was wondering why our blades are glowing gold and not red. Ares giving us the big daddy blessing is when they turn. Orange. When we upgrade this element, we're given moves we've gotten on the blades from previous games, whereas all other elements have completely new specials. Just some attention to canon and detail since these blades came from Ares first. Now is a great moment to mention the chains have never felt better in a God of War game. And I mean to emphasize chains and not the blade part. Ascension really makes the chain part of the blades feel impactful and important. This is mostly derived from the sound design. Hearing the way they whip, crack, and jiggle together, fighting with them feels and sounds like an interactive symphony of murder and it's never been better. Each of the magics are given so much gravitas in Ascension too. That beautiful zoom in sound design and of course, how powerful they are. This direction feels like the natural path that Santa Monica wants us to go down, but not at all. No, 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 no. This is just some extra goodies. Here is actually where we're meant to go, which is exactly where we fell after the bridge broke. Really like the switch up of our expectations on the level design. This damage pillar is really easy to miss, and some gamers like myself play these games like a shark, always moving forward. It's satisfying. What can I say? Ascension really makes you feel like the Blades of Chaos. Take the ice of Poseidon and you will find your path. Ascension wastes no time giving us all our elements early, which I really appreciated. Instead of waiting till half or over halfway through the game to get our magic and weapon upgrades, we're given everything super early on, giving us the opportunity early to pick our favorite element and start maxing that one out first. Which is welcome since we've already gone through so many games waiting to get all of our abilities, so it's a nice change of pace. Also, with the addition or subtraction, however you want to look at it, of having to level up to get your spells, Best to give them out early so we can start dumping orbs into them. 
Seriously, I don't know if graphics have hit a cap and we just can't get so much better, or if Santa Monica is just cracked. This game could have been released this year and I would have been like, right on. Looks freaking fantastic. Yeah, there's a couple bits showing their age, but overall, looks way better than a lot of tiles coming out. Look at that you, Sense Row. Could this be mostly art design? Absolutely, so there's another win for you. Also, don't forget this is being streamed at 720p. Playing this on an actual PS3 is way more impressive. Should I say it? Should I make the terrible joke? Thank goodness for my chocolate starfish of a camera angle, Monica. Did they reuse this enemy and kill animation for God of War 3? Absolutely, but they only use this guy once in the game, so I say, good use of resources, but also well done on showing restraint, because Ascension would have been ripped on more if they were everywhere. For those who have eyes to see, I offer the lightning of Zeus. Ah, back when they were chums. God of War always has the most complicated steps. It's such a simple problem, but I think that's why I freaking love it. What other game would you have to crawl and fight on Johnny moving stakes just to open a door? Don't care how intrusive this camera angle is. They don't throw anything hard at us, so it's just neat, okay? Does that get anyone else hype or just me? My gifts, she must have them all. Kratos walking up to the Oracle like, my gift is that I'm not gonna f kill her. Gotta hit that innocent viciously dying quota, right? Very often Kratos uses the environment and creatures weapons to kill them. You'd think the blades imbued with the power of the gods would be enough, but oh well. I think Kratos just gets bored and wants to get creative. Wow, am I thinking back to my God of War video and how for granted we take scale like this for. On the PS2 it was mind blowing and now on the PS3 and beyond it's expected and like, oh, here's another big, uh, I'm used to it now. I'm desensitized. How could you do this to me, Santa Monica? You're spoiling me! I bet a lot of developers hated Santa Monica because they constantly set the bar so high. Even to this day. It is a massive task you have set before us, Master. Again, the sound design is way ahead of its time. Just listen to this man's voice. My brothers, they... they need food and rest. You can tell that his voice is being muffled and reverberating with this mask. You have not been asked to speak! No way Monica did not intend for that to be funny. We can no longer stand the sight of you. We? Oh, he must be talking about his collective. Nope, literally just talking we with that little growth gremlin on him. Hmm, Hades blades were my favorite when I was 13. They're my favorite today. They offer the best CC, I believe, of all the elements, and it's so pretty. My favorite color is purple, after all, if you can't tell. You might also notice that the light finisher is very similar to the finisher of the claws of Hades in God of War 3. Seeing lore and storytelling through the combos and gameplay makes me love this developer even more. I love the Medusa Gaze puzzles. Super fun to play around with the world auto-healing and trying to work around it until we get our own control of it. That is what I thought. We have to find a better slave trader. Oh, the woes of Greek life. Also, what the f***? <laughs> I guess that's one way to do Castor and Pollux. You will never see the Oracle! Seems that she will never see us either. My, quite persistent, isn't he? This is true brotherly love, if I do say so myself. When Pollux asks Zeus to share his immortality and bring Castor back, I highly doubt this is what he had in mind. Now every time I think of the Gemini constellation, I'm gonna think of this circumcision that never happened. Having to play the floor as lava while fighting the dynamic duo is a layer to this fight that kept my anxiety racing in the good kind of way. A first person got a gore game would be kind of cool if I'm being honest. The amulet of Uroboros is hands down the second best part of the game. First being combat. So, so much you could do with this, and when you factor in the clone, you can really get inventive with your puzzles. Do they? Not as much as they could have, but I'm sure that is not for a lack of trying. There's got to be a good balance of combat and puzzles, but getting stuck in a puzzle forever ruins the pacing of a game like this. And with this being the last God of War game I'll be doing until Ragnarok, sorry PSP titles, you're great, but there is no easy way to capture gameplay for you. I've got to mention the puzzles as they appear in canon, as it really lends to Kratos' mind. He's not just a big dumb brute in rage muscles, he's smart and calculated at times. You don't become the best general in the Spartan army so young on strength alone, and have always loved this angle of them. An interesting visual that parallels the creation of the Furies. The Furies are the ones that dole out justice to those who have sinned, and that is what the ghost of Sparta becomes once he remembers what he's done. Is it silly that a little broken bridge impeded Kratos? Maybe, a little, but a game's got a game. The puzzles where you have to halfway suspend something and find the right moment to freeze it were standouts in Ascension, and the game must be wanting more of them. Check it, younger Ares looking mad handsome. In rage and insanity, Ares hoped to conceive the perfect warrior. But I was only a disappointment to him. Damn. So, in a way, when Kratos was groveling that he wanted to make Kratos the perfect warrior, it was like a father looking at his son before being murdered by him. Kratos just can't afford this, can he? 
Making me real nervous for Ragnarok. Ares molded you to take down the very walls of Olympus. You trying to tell me that we have Ares to thank for being able to kill Zeus? I actually really kind of like that. Did the story need to be told? No. But I love me some God of War. Having Ares' portion of the story fleshed out a bit more only heightens my enjoyment of the entire series. Destroy my enemies! And my life is yours! They changed it. Do I prefer the original as it's more of a desperate cry than a bold declaration? Yeah. Still like it though, because TC Carson is just so good. The blood of your very... The past is the past, Orgos. Kratos interrupting the cutscene is jarring in all the right ways. We normally expect stuff like this to play out and have faded out or something, but for Kratos, even the mention of it is too much. The burden is so heavy on him. He's got control of the non-diegetic cutscenes. Past you now seek to rectify. And I will do so without the aid of a fury. <sighs> Troy Baker, my man. Orkos is just annoyed, totally knowing that he'll get Kratos to come around. I love Hordor, or this big giant guy. Just seems like a sweetheart, just doing his job, getting boats out to sea. He needs to be protected. And then I remember God of War 3. Seeing normal skin Kratos is always really uncanny, but love the attention to his Mediterranean skin tone. Many games, movies, and hell, anything set around the Mediterranean often forget this and make their characters as pale as a sheet of printer paper. I have watched you over the years. When you were just a boy, I saw the signs. Even the loss of your brother did not sway your focus. Ah, the Demos reference. Those who played Ghost of Sparta got a little kick out of that one, and those who haven't are left confused as all hell. Even the loss of your brother did not sway your focus. The tragedy only improved you. <laughs> Furies are doing some good gaslighting right here, if I'm to be frank. Using the lesser of family tragedies to position his wife and daughter's death is a good thing. So, there is something you value more than ambition. They've been wearing the ring to find out just exactly what Kratos would need to possibly stay loyal to Ares forever. First, they tried many women. Then, the ambition that got his family killed in the first place. And the last time, his wife herself. I'm guessing they suspected it to be Lysandra, thus the ring, and Orkos knew they'd use this against him and warned him in Kira Village. This model was actually first a testament of Kratos on what he looked like after the torture of the Furies. Would have been real cool to play this emaciated Kratos in the present day. This will definitely have to go into the record. Record. Must record. Must record. Damn, has the Calendar Man seen better days? He even has a line around his head, just like Calendar Man. Oh, their own son. That is no reason to betray your own. Oh, the irony. You'll be eating those words soon enough, Kratos. The entire game story is actually just like one hour long, but we gotta go through these flashbacks just to see how we ended up with the gear we need to fight the Furies, which I find very amusing. See, Kratos used to be a good guy, saving innocent lives of who went to the Rickon school of running away from things. God of War Ascension is pretty safe. I'll give the haters that. The statue of Apollo is basically the same thing as Pandora's temple, where half the game you're navigating a temple to get the goodies at the end, but it's the same plot as God of War 2, so what of it? It's still fun. Was James Cameron a producer on this game or something? Have I mentioned this game is just really pretty? Haha, ha, the gauntlet of Apollo is just that, his gauntlet, and also a fighting gauntlet. How fun. Whoa, she's got an arm again. Wonder how she's gonna lose it. Really cool, but don't understand why they had to go to the Battle of the Five Armies School of Warfare. The Spartans would never do this unless they were directed by Zack Snyder or Peter Jackson. Ooh, so that's how. Not often are we given the double team boss fight in God of War. The only one of note I can remember is Magni and Modi. Oh, I guess the Furies. Fates? It's a little confusing. And God of War 2. These are tough though, and I want more of them. Perhaps if you serve your purpose well, you will even end up on Olympus one day. Perhaps. At least for a moment. <laughs> I could listen to TC Carson's echoing grunt in my ears all day. Is that weird? Just gonna mention, the clone is a blast to play with, but like I mentioned earlier, only used to such a degree. This is a fun callback to the enemy dump we had in the first game, just throwing trash mobs at us to mow our way through. We'll never get old. That's why the Kingdom Hearts 2 level where you gotta kill a thousand heartless is such a core memory of mine. It took me till here to get my blaze to max, so I started putting orbs into the elements. And wow, is that when the game totally won me over for our, the best combat in the OG series. Once you get these elements leveled up, there are so many different toys to play with. Some are just more combo options, as other feels like straight up magic, like Zeus's light special, which is basically Cronus Rage from 2. And then add on all the rage abilities. It makes me not mind the rage meter as much and welcome it as an easily renewable resource for some big fun abilities. 
and getting extra moves from the elements helps build rage meter faster and after playing around with the different moves you can really get a good flow and dance going couple that with switching elements mid combo there's a lot for self-expression and maximum murder does it take the double rage meter to really have the room to have the most fun with this system sure but that's the payoff of the progression you truly do feel powerful by the end of it you really feel that getting stronger throughout something god of war has always done well not always scaling enemies with our upgrades so there's a similar challenge all throughout making our upgrades feel pointless and if they're going to do that they should have just done milestone leveling instead of exp based that's for my D&D lovers. But they don't, and they have those weaker enemies that we fought at the beginning that we could just one or two shot with our upgraded blades. So cool, so cool, so cool, so cool. Repairing the entire Statue of Apollo is not what I was expecting to do at all. And gosh, sometimes it's something as simple as Fix It Felix to make me have a good time. The plot between my parents to overthrow Olympus. I could not believe Alethea's words. Oh, the irony, my friend. Oh, the trial of Archimedes. This is what separated the girls from the gamer girls. The hardest level in God of War history pre-patch, and I feel honored to be among those who suffered through death screen after death screen to guide through this gauntlet. This is the real final boss of the game, as the actual one is more of a spectacle gimmick fight. We will break him within the walls of Hecatonkeries. Santa Monica could have gone for a linear story, and had they, it would have been quite the boss rush of an ending that I wouldn't have minded. But the two timelines intercut made for a much more engaging narrative that pulls it off much better than that other game that tried to play with timelines. What was it called? The first of them or something like that? Gosh, I did not want to stop playing that. So, so beautiful. Something we don't get to see with Kratos very often. It's very humbling for him and lovely to see him this way. Probably why we love 2018 so much. I have been away far too long. Among my favorite moments in all of God of War, Ascension has its moments. I have been away far too long. That delivery right there is how I know TC Carson would have made a great 2018 Kratos. That softness is something we really see from this Kratos, and wow, is it a showstopper for me. Plus, imagine whenever Kratos does lose his temple, we get that OG roar and gutturalness that we got from TC Carson, just to quiet himself down and be normal again. Oh, it would have been so freaking good, but Christopher Judge does do a great job still. All that you have lost can be yours once again. If this is what keeps you in service to Lord Ares, then this is what you shall have. Any lesser man would have 100% take this offer, but not our Kratos. Wow, look at the eyes open up and go wide. Some crazy attention to detail. Damn do I love the end of Pirates of the Caribbean 3. The team probably asked the director how big should they go for the final boss of Ascension, and I'm sure the director Todd Pappy said yes. Which brings me to how every God of War title before 2018 each had a different director, and still managed to keep an amazing level of consistency. This is mostly because they promoted from other developers within the studio already. So it was more of just a changing of hats. And having your directors having worked on previous games grants a massive advantage over bringing a new blood in. You know, I thought I had a crush on this fairy, but I take it back. Definitely don't stick your Kratos in that. Oi, Kratos. Caught a live one, didn't you? <laughs> Gotta love a good old Dolly Zoom to show where our character's head's at. And the zoom comes out instead of in, removing his tunnel vision of murdering the Furies, giving his mind room to think about what he's doing. Or for him, at this moment, doing again. How rough for him to actually have to kill his wife of his own volition now. I would have taken what my mother's offered. I would rather live in truth. Is this the only friendly interaction we see of Kratos besides Pandora? And I guess you could say any of the women in our uh, minigames. I guess Hephaestus. I would rather live in truth. I fear you may come to regret those words. Well, could say God of War 3, but now that line has taken on a whole new meeting with Ragnarok on the horizon. Destroy the oath. Kill Ares. Have your revenge. This was some great cliffhanger music. The strings really give me amped for the next chapter in this story. If I had been playing chronologically. And as we close, we get our OG theme coming in. 
God of War Ascension was not well received when it came out, mainly due to franchise fatigue and most of us having been satisfied with Kratos' last chapter. And though it's true we did not need the story to be told, it is still a great time to jump back into the shoes of Kratos for one last go. This is the crispiest looking of the OG God of War games, barring the 3 remaster. It's gameplay, rising above even that of 3, and bringing home all the aspects we know and love from God of War. Throw in the inclusion of a really well-rounded multiplayer, and you can see why as a kid I never agreed with all the hate surrounding this game. Seeing Kratos' softer side on a home console is something I've always wanted and welcomed in this title. Ascension was also fighting an uphill battle, though. The story had already been concluded for Kratos, and interest in Hacken's last games were waning. The game seemed to have failed not through a lack of trying, just too many obstacles for it to summon. And sadly, it couldn't. I mean, just take one look at the amazing live action trailer they made for this game and all the work they put into that finding the actor. Brandon White looks exactly like Kratos, and if we could have TC do the voice and have him act it, then why the hell not do a movie with them? Overall, Ascension is a great game worth the price of entry, and if you haven't played it, at least play it for the gameplay, as it's the best old God of War has to on offer for what Kratos is capable of. And remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza!